Uh, hello everyone, welcome back to the Japan Archives, our new format now. So just to remind you of the new format, it was going to be whoever was running the main theme, the other person would be doing their rudimentary quick research on the internet to allow us to have a bit more of an easy discussion and discourse. It does mean that for now, Sumiko no Heather is going to be put on a shelf, but that doesn't mean we're not going to be having those kinds of things every now and then. It's just instead we will dedicate full episodes to a poet or poems in particular instead of having, instead of only giving over a quick five, six, seven minutes or、um, to these topics because as interesting as they were, it always felt kind of, I don't know, like unfair to you to. You know, you have to like cram this thing in right at the end. And at least that was my opinion. So, and of course, we're not going to be talking about our days. We are focusing more now on the topics at hand. But I think at the very least, I can ask how you're doing today, Heather, before we jump in. Just don't tell me about the weather. Just go, I'm good, and then we'll start. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good, then we'll start. <laughs> All right. So, Today's topic, episode 89. I have remembered the number、oh, today. You know the number. We are going to talk about the Golden Tea House today. So, Heather, chime in at any point. Please do.、Okay. And let's just see how our new format goes. But I'm very excited to be doing it this way, if I'm honest. So, the Golden Tea Room, or as it was known in Japanese back then, was the Ogon no Cha Shitsu. It was not actually a permanent structure. That you know, was there that people could visit. It was actually something that people, you know, it was built for people to go and visit. So it could be taken apart and it could also travel around Japan. So this portable tea room, I suppose, dates back to the late 16th century and that was in the Azuchi Momoyama period. And it was constructed for use by Hideyoshi Toyotomi. Historically, I don't think we've talked about this guy much before,、mm-hmm. no. but historically, he had actually risen up from peasanthood under the leadership of Oda Nobunaga, who we have mentioned so many times at this point. And he worked his way up to being one of his retainers. And such was Toyotomi's power later on in his life. He also became known as, one of, as the Second great unifier of Japan after Oda Nobunaga. So he was quite an influential, pers- influential person for his time, I suppose. Sadly, the original tea room has been lost to the passage of time, but there is in existence many replicas which we still have to this day. Looking at when we find the first mentionings of this tea room, historically, we can find it dating to the year of Tensho 14, which was the equivalent in the West of the year 1586. And it says that this room was brought to the Kyoto Imperial Palace so that Toyotomi could host the then, the then Emperor Ogimachi. And it was thought that The Golden Tea Room was likely built just shortly before he met up with the Emperor, specifically so that the Emperor could be his first host for the Tea Room. And、uh, following on from this, he then began giving tours of the Tea Room itself, as well as exhibiting for people, you know, many of his most precious Mei Butsuki, which were his special tea utensils that he used for the ceremonies. And so we. Then see the tea room mentioned、uh, the next year in Shiyue 1、uh, of Tensho 15. So we know the specific date for this one, which was November the 1st, 1587. And the tea room was said to have been built and located in the Kitano Tenmangu Shrine, again in Kyoto, where it was used for the grand Kitano tea ceremony. And I went on a bit of a Rabbit hole with this one because I found out we still have records concerning the signboards that were posted up around Kyoto at the time to advertise this event. And these records are were preserved in records called the Matsuya Kaiki Tea Ceremony Records, and these were stored by the Matsuya Genzaburo family. And we actually know exactly what all of these signboards said. So the first there was. Seven in total. And the first one read In the Kitano Grove, weather permitting, from the first day of the 10th month and continuing for 10 days, 
his lord in con in connection with his presence at the grand channel you so the tea room will assemble every single one of his meibutsu his tea utensils in order to let tea devotees come and view them the second one then reads all tea devotees including warriors attendants townspeople farmers and those of lower station regardless of who they are can bring a kettle a well bucket a drinking bowl as well as some tea and in regards to the tea no offense would be taken if it was substituted with powdered roasted rice known as kogashi and all people no matter their station were allowed to take part oh the third one goes on to say in the setting up of the room if you want to take part since the building would be made of it will be in a pine grove a floor space of two tatami will be more than suitable however wabi people so those who like tea or the the thought of wabi sabi which we've kind of covered before may simply spread mat covers or rice hull bags and all participants may arrange themselves as they please so it was it seemed that not only is he welcoming anyone into these tea ceremonies which i think was quite interesting for him to do there didn't seem to be an official way in which they had to be seated as well so they could mingle amongst everyone if they potentially wanted the fourth one which i found very interesting went on to say that the invitation is not limited to japan it extends to everyone who sets their heart on tea and it even invite any even invited people from the continent However, I doubt that many people from the continent would have seen them considering they were only set up in Kyoto, but of course during this time in Japan there were many many Jesuit missionaries and some of them did later go to the tea ceremonies. The next one read in order that Toyotomi may show the treasures to participants. His his lord is extending the duration so that it is not limited to the first day of the 10th month. So already he's extending the event. The other one was a bit more of a punishment in a way saying that you know all of these arrangements have been made for the benefit of wabi people people who love tea in the essence of wabi sabi so any one of these people who fails to attend will be prohibited hereafter from preparing tea even the powdered roasted rice variant and anyone who visits such a person will also suffer the same punishment so if you like tea and you don't come you can never have tea again so kind of strange. harsh yeah and the last one which i also found very interesting is he states that he will prepare the tea personally for oh. everyone who attends and it won't be just the people from distant places who would have an honored position for coming from so far anyone no matter their station could come and their lord was going to prepare tea for them personally which i think is a very very interesting thing for someone from this time period in japan to do because they were very very strict and rigid in their caste yeah. systems so that was all of the i was going to say litigation all of the what's the word <laughs> i'm looking for it was all of the criteria and events and all of the things that would happen if you loved tea and you came along and honestly i i think i would have gone i don't know about I you gone. I need to, like, we need to. if I, if I was told the emperor of Japan is going to make some tea if you come along about like, okay I'm coming I'd love for the emperor to make me some tea I know he wasn't the emperor but he was de facto leader of Japan at that point in time very very interesting indeed the tea room itself later finds its way to Hizen Nagoya castle in the 5th month of Bunroku 1 the year 1592 This was actually the location from which Hideyoshi would launch the 1592 to 1598 Japanese invasion of Korea and the tea room continued to follow Hideyoshi wherever he went most likely continue with him on his later journeys to Fushimi Castle as well as later to the Jura Jurakudai residence located in Kyoto before we ultimately lose track of the tea room we have no records as to why it was stopped being used whether it was destroyed whether it was lost whether it had served its purpose we simply don't know we just never hear about it ever again so it does appear that the tea room was i suppose kind of short lived like i said we do have a number of reconstructions that you can still go and look at 
So if you are traveling around Japan, you can find reconstructions in Fushimi Castle, Osaka Castle, in the Gold Leaf Company of Hakuza in Kanazawa. There are also replicas in Chofukuji Temple in Toyama, as well as the Museum of Art in Shizuoka. And if you also want to see a reconstruction of the golden utensils that、uh, Toyotomi used, you would you can find those if you visit the Kyoto City Archaeological Museum. There is an additional reconstruction which was made by a goldsmith called Ishikawa Koichi the Third, and he reconstructed it from historical accounts of an eyewitness. But I've been unable to figure out who the eyewitness was, unfortunately. So his reconstruction, he made a room which was eight foot two in height, eight foot ten inches in width, which gave a diameter of eight foot four inches. Now his construction was made entirely out of cypress wood that was already two hundred years old at this point, with a total amount of fifteen thousand sheets of twenty three karat gold leaf placed over the wood, which totaled twenty six point ten kilograms, all of which was applied by hand. He also recreated all of the utensils from the ceremonies in pure gold, not gold leaf. Oh, so looking now finally at some of the accounts of those who visited the hall and its appearance, some of these people, like I said earlier, were actually the Jesuit missionaries from the time, and one of them. Was a man we have not talked about since maybe episode four or six, as it is Otomo Sorin, who was the man who was in charge at the time when he worked with the I don't know I guess auger the samurai weatherman as we called him, and he went against the samurai weatherman's. Predictions and went to war and lost his battle. So we're on about that Otomo Sorin. He has come back to us. <laughs> According to these accounts of people who visited the room, measured three tatami mats in size, so that gives a size of about nine point four by eighteen point eight feet, and it resembled a standard tea ceremony room with flat walls and sliding shoji doors. In this reconstruction, there was also the inclusion of the Tokonamo alcove in the construction, and you will often find this in a lot of Japanese traditional houses or tea rooms. There's a little alcove where they have a space for potentially flowers of the seasons or like a scroll with poetry associated with it. And in addition to all of that, gold leaf was said to have covered every surface, including the doors. Silk gossamer was placed on the sliding doors lattice work, and the tatami was also elaborate. It wasn't just plain, as it was covered in crimson felt or fabric, and as we've seen from some of the reconstructions, all the utensils were either made of gold or they were gilded with gold, save of course for the whisk for stirring up the tea and the cloth used to clean the instruments after. And that is all we know. About the golden tea room, as it was so short-lived and has unfortunately been lost, which I think is so sad. I really wish we knew why it stopped being used or what happened to it. That there must have been a reason, especially if you're you're creating something that first you use to host the emperor, and then you use again for everyone in Japan who loves tea. It's gonna be popular. So did it serve its purpose? I don't know. I mean, what what happened after? Did someone after the, the next、uh, person in line? Did they need? Like this sounds a little bit kind of harsh. Did they need need money to start a war or to fight a war, or did they need? Was there a, a a famine or something that happened where they needed to have revenue for some reason? You know, it's weird that you said that because he used so much gold in this. But I was reading that early on in his life or early on when he started ruling. He actually did come across some very wealthy mines in Japan, so he、That's、did have access thought,、yeah. to the resources to make this overly elaborate tea room. So perhaps it was a way of showing his power and his resources. You know, why would you stop using it, or why not give it to a successor to continue on showing your power and status and why you should be the de facto leader of Japan? Maybe、the next person wasn't a gold person. Maybe they preferred silver. I mean, perhaps. Yeah. <laughs> well, 
I, I have a question because you, you talked hmm. about the golden tea room. Um, when I did the, the you know, super fast research, the thing I found was that the golden tea room was a different sort of tea room than the previous tea rooms that had been made. That the previous tea rooms, right, you mentioned the Wabi Sabi, previous tea rooms were done in a different style. And like the golden tea room was a completely new style and hadn't been done before. And if you've had previous generations doing the same specific tea room style, do they think they might have just want to return back to the traditional tea room style that maybe the gold was too ostentatious for them or that was just not to their taste or, you know, like it, possible? I, I'm not sure about the, I know gold itself is pretty soft. I would assume that having an instrument made completely out of gold would probably get beaten up after a long time. You'd have to replace it or re-gold leaf it and it would require a lot of maintenance, wouldn't it, for the instruments? Yeah, you you said that it, it does it does go against how it was. Like before it was very codified and structured and also kind of rustic. Like the aesthetic was it being very rustic because you know tea was supposed to be accessible to everyone in a way. And, you know, this was all brought together under Toyotomi's tea master, who was called Sen no Rikyu. However, funnily enough, there are those who speculate that he actually helped in the design of this tea room. Mm. The opulence of the room does kind of contradict to the norms of Wabi Sabi. So why call upon the lovers of Wabi Sabi to come to such an elaborate thing, which is so against everything that's come before? And again, even though it did go against so much of Wabi Sabi, the codes of Senoriku. We do know that he did attend on many occasions this tea room. So does that mean he also was willing to adapt and change? Or maybe because he was the Lord of Japan, he kind of went along with it and he was like, this is a new take, but maybe it will bring more people into the love of tea. And then eventually he was like, okay, let's just go back now. Because I find it very interesting that he would also be involved if it was so against everything he'd already designed. You know, that having knowledge of the, the mindset of someone in the 16th century, it could be, <laughs> you know, it could be that, or maybe he wasn't such a such a strict person, perhaps, you know, wanting to see it. And you you mentioned that the gold mines had been found perhaps because it was new and was novel as well, because all of a sudden there's this big influ influx of gold and you can do all kinds of things with it. But, you know, it's probably not a bottomless well of gold that perhaps maybe the gold was running out. So you get the, the novelty of it, but then you can't maintain that sort of thing as well. But maybe he just wasn't you know, super, super strict that it's this way or nothing. It's like, oh, you know what? Let's take a look at this. This is really interesting. And I also kind of wonder, in the, if the whole place is made out of gold, in the summer, do you think in the sun it would be really, if it, they do this ceremony during the daytime, would it be kind of hot? I don't think, I mean, I don't, I'm not an expert on gold. <laughs> and what happens to gold when it gets hot? I mean, gold also has a low melting point, no, compared to other metals. But I don't know how it reacts as gold leaf instead. I feel that it would stay cooler. Perhaps it would make the room cooler. But again, I'm not an expert. I don't think it would melt. <laughs> if anything, I mean, potentially have... the glue holding it together. But, you know, I think they factor those things in. Like, they know how hot Japan is in the summer, so they would have prepared accordingly for it. But I think I the just, goal would have stayed cool. I was just thinking, can we do a bonus episode where we test the properties of gold to verify our theories? This is our special <laughs> science episode. <laughs> anyway, I think we're branching out. <laughs> but no, it was definitely an interesting question. Like, if you have a room with so much gold... How is it affected in the different seasons? Like, it has to be maintained. And perhaps that is one of the reasons it's slowly just, it kind of just disappeared. Maybe they didn't want to maintain it anymore. It served its purpose. Maybe. Now, I'm really starting to think. I'm wondering, because there's replicas, right? We can go and see what it, it might have looked like. Yes. Also, I thought I saw something in the, the article I read that something is in 
the Tokyo Museum as well. I don't know if it's a replica or the instruments, but I thought I saw something about Tokyo. But the rooms themselves is, you said Kyoto, Osaka was, you said Fushimi, you mentioned Fushimi. The only mentioning of Tokyo I got from the article I read was that the the goldsmith who made the reproduction from wow. historical records was from Tokyo. The reconstruction you can visit in a museum was the Kyoto City Archaeology Museum, if you want to see the golden utensils. But yeah, you can see a picture of the reconstruction in Fushimi Castle. And honestly, as nice as it sounds to have a room made of gold, I don't, I don't think it looks good. But that's my personal opinion. Maybe other people like a room of gold. <laughs> I, I just... I just wonder the practicality of it. The, the, I'm looking at the. I, I pulled up the, the article just to take a look at it, and yeah, it's really, it's really bright, a little shiny. It's very bright, but my my unfortunate opinion is when you have too much gold, it almost kind of looks tacky. Sorry, Hideyoshi San. Thomas says your tea room was tacky. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> Um, but that's my opinion. But then at the same time, maybe I could overlook it because the Lord of Japan is making me tea. The Lord of Japan is making your tea. I, <laughs> exactly. I definitely. You would not be looking at the tea room. You'd be look, looking at the, the Lord of Japan who's whisking your tea. Exactly. <laughs> we haven't touched so much on tea. And now I've got questions. I have I have questions. I don't know if we can, we can answer these now or if that's going to be another episode. But about tea ceremony, I've only been to one honestly i've only been to one and i don't that was a long not a long time ago but a decent yeah. time ago i mean you've been to more than i have so you have more more working knowledge than i do of the ceremony itself mm. but also the different types of tea i know you mentioned the the roasted rice tea and I, th I know there's genmaicha which is roasted tea with green tea can, can we add that into this episode or is this going to be another continuation episode because i know we're getting up on the i mean i think perhaps for tea we could dedicate an episode to itself because i was at sensoji today and we went to get some green tea and then i just saw this this woman had a had a, had a thing on the desk and it was like matcha or like green tea is a generic term in japan and then it kind of like had green tea and they like split off into like seven different types of green tea and then it was showing you like one is more bitter one is sweeter one is stronger one is weaker and i was like oh there's more there's even more to this than i initially thought but you're right i i have done tea ceremony a few times in the past in nagoya actually quite a lot of times at home because my partner is doing tea ceremony he's a student so we do it sometimes at home so i know like there's very specific things you say or you bow at certain times you have to pick up the cup in a certain way and like turn it two times before you drink different schools as well have different ways of making it some schools when they kind of whisk up the tea they try and make it frothy with lots of bubbles whereas other schools they whisk it but they do it in a way where they try and make no bubbles even if it's the same type of tea, they have different processes and how they want it to appear to their customers, the way you then drink it, the way you finish off the tea ceremony. It's all very different and very interesting. So that definitely needs an episode in, its, in itself. Like we could easily spend 30, 40 minutes talking about tea ceremony. And also, I think we talked about it with the interview with my parents. There are also the different teas where some is more like a normal drink and some are more like grr and like more... Um, Horrible ways to describe, but like mucusy. <laughs> viscous, I think viscous. Viscous, thank you. That's the word I need. Yeah. More viscous, yeah. not not mucusy. <laughs> okay, that that went to a different place. Yeah, that's just very off-putting. <laughs> no, no, I would not want to have that in the golden tea room. No, thank you. No, thank you. Oh no. Yeah, I think I think I think the thonk is okay. We're gonna leave tea for another day. I mean, I thought it was very interesting. I wish there was more on it. I wish there was more. I wish there was a satisfactory end to the story. A bit like when we did Yas game. We don't know. We don't know where he went in the end. We just don't, we don't know. We don't know what happened to the tea room. Where did he go? Is it in a storage room somewhere forgotten? <laughs> no. 
<laughs> I was getting lost in the midst of time. And then I'm just picturing what a possible spoiler alert if you haven't seen Indiana Jones, where they just go into the warehouse and it's just in a box on a shelf somewhere. <laughs> <Probably. Wow. laughs> you know, if you haven't seen a really um, older movie, you know, that's what happens at the end. <laughs> it's a spoiler alert if you haven't. Okay. Yeah, because I really want to go over some more too about the, the tea ceremony because the, I mean, we see, we can see the replicas though. I mean, that's a lot of the castles here are yeah, replicas. Yeah, true. Things are replica, replicas. So, I mean, we still can look at what it might have looked like. So the records of it lived on. The room itself is not the original, but the records, we have the knowledge of it. So, I mean, that's still alive. Yeah, because we do have the eyewitness records, we can create faithful reconstructions, you know, as far as what those people said or wrote down, whether they elaborated certain things or omitted other things, we'll never know. But it does at least give us as close a representation as we can possibly get with what is left, which was with the information that's come down to us at, at this point in time. And I'm just trying to give you give you a happy feeling, Thomas. I sense your I sense your sadness about the tea room. I know I'm so sad about the tea room, but um, I mean, I think we can call it there. Then that was our look into the golden tea room today. So, but anyway, thank you for tuning in today. I we hope it was enjoyable for you. And in the next episode, which almost conveniently because of the scheduling will come out on Christmas day is going to be an episode about Jesus because apparently he visited Japan. So let's have fun with that. Shall we? <laughs> um, so for now that is everything for me. How about you, Heather? I, I think that's all for me, except now I really want a cup of tea. Oh yeah. I'm going to have to go and get some tea after this episode. All right, guys. Matane. Matane.